I am absolutely obsessed with Horizon Forbidden West. This game is the perfect sequel in every sense of the word, and I just wanted to talk about why. So you all know I love Horizon Zero Dawn. If you didn't know me, then you, I, I love Horizon Zero Dawn. There you go, there's the information. I mean, I made a huge video on it two years ago that, by the way, blew up beyond any of my expectations, which was absolutely crazy. And can I just say, the comments in that video are probably some of the least toxic comments I've ever had in a YouTube video, which to me just goes to show but Horizon has some incredible fans. Apologies for my voice, by the way. I am just getting over COVID. I'm not doing too badly now, but it is still affecting me a little bit to the point where I might sound a little bit off. If you don't know who I am, then I probably sound fine. Either that, or you, I do sound a bit weird, and that's why. So, um, that being said, I didn't think that my voice being a bit fucked really mattered too much for a sit-down, relaxed video like this that to be fair I haven't done in a little while and I just really wanted to talk about Horizon Forbidden West. It has been all I've played, all I've done for the past de couple days since it came out which is just, I haven't played a game like this this much since Red Dead Redemption 2. There have been other games that I've obviously loved, Ghost of Tsushima is among them, you've got Persona 5 that I played last year but I've not played a game this much where it's been the only thing on my mind, the only thing I've been able to do since Red Dead Redemption 2, and I think that's a testament to just how dense, packed, and of quality the, the, the world building is in Horizon Forbidden West. This video will be spoiler free. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. This video will be spoiler free, so don't worry about any spoilers. I'm not going to jump into that. This is one of those games where I just want you to discover it for yourself if you haven't already jumped in, because Horizon is one of those games. It's about discovery. It's about the mystery. It's about the adventure and the journey, and I would hate to ruin that for anybody, so do not worry about that. We're going to be talking just very, very vaguely about things, my opinions, and, 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 and baseline fundamental gameplay stuff here. So don't worry about that. This video is completely, completely safe. But Horizon Forbidden West is the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn that came out five years ago now, which is absolutely insane to me. Back when it came out, I did make a sort of low-key review like this on that game, uh, which you can check out if you want to do in the description, um, where I was just absolutely obsessed with the Horizon Zero Dawn, so I had to sit down and talk about it, similar to what I'm experiencing now. And that's one of the things that I was worried about with this game. So many sequels these days, they try to be new things. They try and reinvent the wheel. Whereas I miss when sequels were just that. Sequels. Where they built upon the original gameplay concepts, where they built upon the story and characters in the world, and they just pushed it forwards and took us somewhere new, while not forgetting about what came before. It felt like one complete journey from the first game through the second, third, maybe even fourth entries in a, in a, in a franchise. Things just continued and weaved around, and it was one continuous story. Horizon Forbidden West is very, very much that that I wanted out of a sequel to this game. I was worried they were going to tell an entirely new story in a new place that would just have Aloy, maybe some familiar faces, and it wouldn't really delve into what came before. But this game is such a sequel, and something I would love to liken it to is the Ezio trilogy. Assassin's Creed 2 is a marvellous game. Uh, just a fantastic game, start to finish, wonderful story. But then you play Brotherhood, and it's everything AC2 was but it's better. There's a lot of people that of course prefer AC2, AC2 is their favourite one, that's totally fine, I get that, I understand that, but from a gameplay standpoint, from a technical standpoint, everything they do in Brotherhood is just a step up. It's got better side quests, it's got better world design in the terms of its districts, it's got a better HUD, everything's streamlined, the weapon wheel is more easy to access, it's got a higher amount of weapons, armors, gameplay concepts that were only touched upon briefly, like the Monteregioni Villa is now turned into the entire city of Rome. That sort of thing, where everything that was in AC2 is just taken to the next level in Brotherhood, and Brotherhood feels like this continuation of this story, a push forward, the ramifications of what happened in AC2 matter to Brotherhood. Forbidden West is very much the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of the Horizon franchise, in the best way possible, and it's, to me, the staple for how you should do a video game sequel successfully. And it's not just a little reference here and there to things that came before, they use characters and concepts from the original to push the game forward in a new way, and I think that's really inventive, really creative, and incredibly engaging, because you'll see things you recognise and then it will flip it on its head and you'll be doing something new. 
or you'll 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 be tasked with doing something that you've done in Zero Dawn, but you have to go about it a different way. And it inv it reinvents things that you've already seen, but in the most interesting of ways. And it what it really serves the gameplay loop because not only is it familiar to you because you're so used to certain things from Zero Dawn, and it feels like you're still living in that exact world. You have to go about it in a slightly new way, and that means that you're playing something new as well. It's got both aspects to it. Something new, improved, but also so familiar, um, and I think that's really, really well achieved in this game. The world itself is just incredible. Now, I'm not all the way through the game yet. I'm probably about 20 hours in, so I'm yet to experience a great deal of this map, so it goes even further past what I've seen, but from what I've played so far, the diversity and the density are of equal measure in Horizon Forbidden West, and that's something that often you don't get a lot in video games. Look at the newest Assassin's Creed, for example. You get the biggest worlds they've ever made, and a lot of it looks exactly the same. I'll use Assassin's Creed Valhalla as an example. You go through England, and it all looks pretty much the same. Now, granted, England does look pretty much the same, but that's sort of my point. You've picked a poor setting if that's what you're going to do with it. And yeah, some parts look different. You've got mountainous areas, you've got snowy areas, you've got more marshy areas, etc. But it's a lot of land as well of the same area. Whereas Horizon Forbidden West and as well Zero Dawn never overstayed its welcome with a certain type of biome. It did what it needed to do. It packed it full of dense quality content. And then it allows you to move on to another biome. And that's something that I've seen in Forbidden West. Is I've traveled through so many different biomes and I'm only... A third of the way through the entire map at this point. There's so many different areas from your jungles and your swamps to your forests, your fields, your deserts, your canyons, everything. It is absolutely gorgeous and it never overstays its welcome. You never feel like, wow, I've been in a desert for five years. It's like, no, I've been in a desert for a while and now I'm moving into a new region and it feels so organic and so natural and it's always moving. It's always changing. You always feel like you're, you're visiting and discovering something new. It's done in such a, an incredible way and it's a testament to the world design and level design they've created in this game. And it's something that's built on from Zero Dawn because Zero Dawn managed to do it. But this game, I feel, takes it to a new level. It's something above and beyond. It's something far more dense and something far more varied than we got in Zero Dawn, despite the fact that game was very dense and very varied in of itself. But that's just something that a five-year improvement is obviously going to make. Talking about the open world as well, the exploration of that space is something that's a little bit more thoughtful than it was in Horizon Zero Dawn. In Zero Dawn, there was plenty to explore and find. Obviously, you had your cauldrons, you had your bandit camps, you had various quests, towns, villages that you could explore and discover at your own discretion. Horizon Forbidden West goes in a bit of a different direction in some of its aspects. For example, the Old World Ruins now have these really intricately designed, interesting puzzle sections where you have to puzzle your way through an environment using your different tools, weapons, and the environments to navigate your way through and come to the end point where you get your reward, which can be information in the form of data pads, relics, or certain loot. And all of that is such an engaging process. The way that you enter an old world ruin, you probably spend about 10 minutes in there, maybe 15 minutes if it's a larger ruin, and you navigate your way through and you just sort of disconnect from the outside world. You're focused on your current objective and what you need to do, and you're really engaged in that. And to me, that is an incredible feat because it takes you out of the open world without actually taking you out of the open world. You could leave at any point. You're still in the open world. It's not a separate scenario but you feel like you're in a level, like you're in a contained mission. And I think that's really, really well done and something that you don't see a lot in open world games. The general missions as well that I won't talk to too much in fear of talking about spoilers are very varied. They're very much um, what they did with Zero Dawn, but taken to a new level. I feel that they've really taken the time to design the levels with a lot of care and a lot of variety and a lot of set pieces too. It feels like when you go into like a, a main mission quest that there's a lot going on all of the time, whether that's in the battles, the story, the dialogue, or just the overall scenery, there's always something happening that makes it very, very engaging. A lot of that carries over to the side quests too. Obviously, the side quests tend to be a little bit more low-key because you need the main quest to be a little bit more bombastic, a little bit bigger, higher profile. Uh, but a lot of that care and that density carries over as well to the side quest, which I think is really, really nice. A lot of the times you can't really tell if it's a side quest or not a side quest. And I think that's something that's really, really cool. 
And talking towards the story, obviously, I won't say too much, but it is just as good as Zero Dawn to me. Maybe even better in some areas. I'm going to have to finish the game first before I can comment on the story, and of course, I'll have a full critique on Horizon Forbidden West out in the coming months. Um, it'll be an after-the-hype video like I did for Halo Infinite, like I did for Ghost of Tsushima. But so far, the story is set up in such a way that it has that mystery and that intrigue that's central to a Horizon game. Zero Dawn, the biggest, the biggest mystery of that game was who is Aloy? Why does she exist? What is Project Zero Dawn? All of these questions were there, and I was worried going into Forbidden West that there would be no questions left over, that there'd be no mystery, no intrigue, nothing to discover, and I could not be more wrong. The game immediately from the offset sets up mystery, intrigue, new lore points that were hinted at in Horizon Zero Dawn, and I think that's something really cool, is that you could go through all the data points, all of the voice memos in Zero Dawn, and stuff that you learned there is going to become central to the plot of Horizon Forbidden West, and I won't say any more on it than that, just that if you liked Zero Dawn's story, the direction they were going in, the tone, the vibe, Forbidden West continues that, carries it over, even ups it in a lot of places, and I think that's really, really impressive. There were also so many story moments that just had me grinning, just smiling from ear to ear, that, that just were so fantastic and just made me feel like this is a sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn. It's not something new, it's not something different, it's not an entirely new game in the Horizon universe, it's a complete sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn, and that is something that, like I said, I wanted so badly, and there were so many story moments that had me like, yes, it's paid off my investment, and that's something that sequels don't do a lot of the time. They want to appeal to a new audience. They don't want to pay off the previous audience's investment because that means that you're isolating yourself. It means that you're making a game for people that have, that have played the first one, not new players. And this game, yeah, while I think it's completely open to new players, it pays off so much investment that I've had in Horizon Zero Dawn, and it means a lot to me. It feels very special, and it feels like it was made for me, and I really, really appreciate that. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is something that I really liked in Horizon Zero Dawn. I think it's something that did get a little bit of flack, a little bit of criticism from a lot of people, although I personally never felt that. So this is a bit more of a personal thing to me, is that I didn't really take issue with Horizon Zero Dawn's combat in a lot of ways. I thought it was very engaging, um, very thoughtful in the way that you had to worry about the machine's weaknesses, which type of arrows you were using, what type of weapons you were using, your tear stats, your impact stats, all of those different things, and which parts of the machine you were shooting at. All of those things, I think, came together to make a really thoughtful combat system. I wasn't one of the people that disliked Zero Dawn's combat. I love Forbidden West combat. I think it's Zero Dawn, just with so many more options. The machines have a lot of different varieties in terms of their parts, in terms of their attacks, in terms of their weaknesses, in terms of their strengths. You have a lot more weapons at your disposal that you can gain from different shops and places around the world from loot, so there's a lot more there. If you liked Zero Dawn, then you're going to like Forbidden West. It's that combat system, but they just decided to add a load more things to it, a load more features, and a lot more depth to it, so that's really all there is to say there. Um, I can't really sit here from a standpoint of, I didn't like Zero Dawn, but I like Forbidden West combat, because I think both are really incredible systems. Forbidden West, though, is just better. You know what I mean? The one thing they have improved on, though, is the climbing aspect. Uh, I know a lot of people probably already know this from watching trailers and things like that, but in Horizon Zero Dawn, you could only climb little yellow things around the world. In Forbidden West, you can climb pretty much anything. You use your focus to scan, and then you can see the little handholds, and you just jump up. If it's a rock face, you got to look for the handholds. You can't just Spider-Man up like in recent Assassin's Creed. you got to actually look for the handholds and jump around and navigate from thing to thing. So it's a bit more thoughtful than just climbing up a wall like Breath of the Wild or Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I think is really, really nice. I also think it's super ironic that Horizon Forbidden West has a more in-depth and thoughtful climbing system than the recent Assassin's Creed. It even has proper back ejects which oh, it's so satisfying the game also does so much in the detail department the little things in this game are just they blow me away stuff like the way the grass moves the way that Aloy brushes her hand through some of the tall grass very much you know, in, in the vein of something like a Ghost of Tsushima, uh, you can tell that they definitely helped out in, in, in simulating grass and, and, and foliage and things. The way that Aloy's face and skin will change depending on the environment you're in, the hotter the environment, the redder she's going to be, um, that when it's, if you'll see sweat appear on her face, the colder obviously it'll change depending on that. The same goes for your clothes, you know, whether you're wet, whether it's muddy, whether it's dusty, whether it's snowy, things like that are really cool. There's things you can change that are dynamically different depending on your choices through a playthrough. I won't show any footage because it will spoil some things, but there was at one point in the story where Aloy mentioned to somebody about a side quest to say, like, go and, um, 
if you're heading back that way, go and tell this person that I found this thing they were looking for. That's as vague as I can be with it. And if I hadn't done that side quest, she never would have said that in that main story cutscene. And I think that's something that's really nice, the way that cutscenes and the story, how it, how she interacts can change depending on the side quest you've interacted with beforehand. And there's other little things like the way that when you create a job quest, so you maybe want to craft a certain armor, when you go over to, 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 to go and do that, that quest that you've created for yourself to go and collect the correct machine parts or whatever, she will mention to herself about that quest that you've set up it's not even a quest that exists in the world it's a specific one that you've set for yourself a job you've pinned for yourself she'll still comment on it and the machines involved and the things that you're doing and what you need to acquire and she'll she'll be like oh i guess i have enough to craft that item now it's just one of those little things where like it's just so immersive it feels like all of the little things were cared about and of course I could not talk about this game without talking about the visuals. I've been using photo mode so much, it's just so addictive because the game looks gorgeous at every single turn. The Decima engine is absolutely fantastic and Gorilla know how to utilize it perfectly. It could be maybe one of the, if not the greatest looking game I've ever played. And that's crazy because it keeps changing. My greatest looking game list ranking keeps changing every time I like play a new game. The Last of Us Part 2 was one of the greatest looking games I've ever played. Maybe the greatest looking game I've ever played. I'd argue Horizon Forbidden West looks better. Playing it on resolution mode, you can the fidelity in these character models, when you go and look at their faces, the pores, the blemishes, and it's not just that. It's not just the level of detail and fidelity on character models, on clothing and on environments. It's also the attention to detail on the actual crafting of each character model. Every character model feels incredibly unique, and that's not just because of how they look and their facial features and their skin color, which of course is very diverse because of the lore of Horizon, because of how these the people were populated into the world, blah, 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 lore reasons for why, you know, there's so, so much of a di diverse selection of races. And so it's not just diverse in that aspect, it's also very much in things like body type. In a lot of RPGs, you look at The Witcher 3, most people have like very similar body types unless they're a different race from each other elf dwarf human etc whereas in this game there are so many different body types of people you go from people that are a lot larger maybe a little bit more muscly people that are a lot thinner people that are you know your average sort of build a bit more like aloy there are so many different builds of people in this game that it really enriches the selection of NPCs and your immersion in this world because you go to talk to someone and they look completely different from someone you spoke to before. You can't really tell where they used a previous model again, like it just feels very varied and very unique and I think that's incredible. And the same goes for things like hairstyles depending on the part of the world you're in blemishes on people's faces that are very unique to each individual NPC that I think is incredible because you look at someone you like you can see the different blemishes and imperfections on their face and that's something different to somebody else it gives them a uniqueness it makes them feel like a person not just an NPC and I think that's something that really works to ground you in Horizon's world there's other little things like the wind blowing up sand or the wind blowing up leaves if you're in a forest area and the weather changing the way that that works and how aggressive it is or how how peaceful it is and how calm it is it's things like that that just add to this world and i think that this is one of the most immersive probably the most immersive open world game i've ever played in the way that you can move around in the way that you can navigate in the way that you can explore the way that you dive underwater it looks so beautiful everything in this game is crafted perfectly it's it's I, it's just insane and it's mind-blowing and I'm just thinking about it I'm like I want to do nothing more than hop back in and play this game some more because there is still so much to explore so much to see so much to uncover and so much to do that like I am just having the best time ever Horizon Forbidden West solidifies for me that Horizon is one of my favorite franchises of all time this is takes a lot of what I love about video games in terms of its open world, its storytelling, its mythos, its lore, and it compiles it into one game where I can just play and explore, and it's of such a high quality that it blows me away. If you know me, you know one of my favorite franchises when I was a kid, not anymore, I don't like it anymore, it, it's bad now, but was Assassin's Creed. I absolutely loved Assassin's Creed, those early games that really cared about their mythos, their deep lore, their investment in continued, se continued sequels, um, you know, for the first five games. I mean, I don't really like AC3, but that's not really the point. The first four games, you know, AC1 and the Ezio Trilogy do certain things that I think Horizon takes a lot from. Um, Assassin's Creed haven't really done that for a very, very long time, over a decade now. Um, but I think Horizon Zero Dawn does a lot of things that I loved 
about those games. The idea of the ones who came before is very similar to the AI system in, in the Zero Dawn project, the old ones, things like that, this ancient civilization that you don't know a lot about. How did it fall? How did it, how did it end? You learn those things as you play through Zero Dawn of Forbidden West. The idea of the main character being a key to these old temples, very similar to having first Civ DNA in Assassin's Creed. The idea that there's this, this, this juxtaposition between the core open world and the old one's ruins, the way you've got these old futuristic looking places that are actually old, they're not, they're not, new, they're not, fu they're not from the future, they're from the past, but they look more high tech, more futuristic than the world you live in, which is very based in history, because a lot of it is, is medieval, a lot of it is tribal, a lot of it is, is, is that historical aspect that, 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 that is, that is played into through their crafting of world and lore and these different tribes and factions, it's very much based on a lot of human history, um, but played with and it's very fantasy-esque and I think that it's it's all of those elements that are just things that I absolutely loved in video games specifically in a lot of those old Assassin's Creed's that Horizon deals with and does better than Assassin's Creed ever did um, and it's one of those games that I would say to a lot of people if you loved Assassin's Creed back in the day and you're so sad that they don't make those good games anymore and you, you, you're not playing them anymore because they, they're not they're not what they used to be and they don't they don't scratch that itch for you Horizon scratches that itch for me and I would recommend jumping in if you've never played Horizon play Zero Dawn play Forbidden West I feel like you're gonna find a lot to love if you loved that whole aspect of Assassin's Creed back in the day. I know a lot of people are going to be sighing, rolling their eyes, oh, he's likening it to Assassin's Creed, but there are similar aspects there, and I would just say that as someone that loved those old games and that no longer loves that franchise anymore, this this franchise definitely scratches that itch for me, um, and more so. It's just one of the greatest franchises I've ever played, and Forbidden West definitely, definitely solidifies that for me. And I think that's it for this sort of sort of relaxed review, I guess you could say, of Horizon Forbidden West. I have so much more to say and there's so much more to talk about, spoilers and all, that I will do in my big critique um, of the game um, eventually in a month or so, um, whenever I get around to finishing the game, wrapping everything up, writing the script, editing the video. It's going to take me a little bit, but it's going to be a big one and it's going to be a cool one. I have got a video in the wings waiting to come out, basically, a script that I've written for Shadow of War. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to do that before or after my Forbidden West video, probably before because i've already got the script written i just need to record it i'm waiting for this covid to go away um but that'll be coming out sometime soon uh, as well but let me know your thoughts on horizon forbidden west in the comment section down below how are you finding it what are some of the stuff that you've stumbled across are you having a blast with it the same way that i am let me know i'd love to get a discussion going about horizon forbidden west also, don't forget to join our Discord server, the Four Pillars Discord. The link is down in the description if you want to go and join. We have two Horizon Forbidden West chats uh, channels up on our server. Uh, one for spoilers, where you can go and you can talk all things spoilers, so don't worry about spoiler tagging. Anything spoilery goes in there. And a regular Forbidden West discussion page, where no spoilers in there, just general vague discussions, spoiler-free, uh, about your experiences with the game so that everyone can just discuss it and have a good time. So if you're up for talking about Forbidden West, I'm always in the discussion channel as well, talking about stuff with people too. It's been really, really fun to chat about the game as I've been playing it and as others have been playing it. So hop in the Discord, join us there, um, and it'll be a ton of fun. Anyways, that's it for this video. I don't want to keep you too much longer. Have some fun with Forbidden West and uh, have a good week. Uh, stay safe. I hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you soon for more over on Twitch, and of course, uh, continued here on YouTube as well with more content here and there. Anyway, thank you guys very, very much, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Catch you later. Bye-bye.